Grace Center. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Come on in and find a seat. I um, just want to remind you, you are free to worship up front uh, in any way you want to express yourself this morning. We love to pour out at the Lord's feet this morning all that we are. Could we stand together in preparation to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I did this first service. You know, Scripture says that we get to come full of thanksgiving into His presence. We always want to come into His presence with thanksgiving. So could you stop a moment and just ask, if you can't think of something right off the bat that you're thankful for, you can just ask, Jesus, remind me of something that I'm thankful for. Like I look out and I see familiar faces and I see, I see those visiting and I see new faces. I'm, Lord, I'm just so thankful for your body and how we come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, bringing all kinds of diversity. Lord, I'm just so thankful for your body. Just begin to express out loud what it is you're thankful for, right? We get to start with unsung words and then we're gonna begin singing those words. So Jesus, we adore you. Lord, we recognize it takes you to love you. So we just invite you to come closer. You're already here, but we invite you to come closer. We receive your grace now to pour out at your feet, to withhold nothing. Lord, it's our heart this morning to withhold nothing from you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this time. Bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen.
that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your heart, illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy one. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is His love, how enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt. Never doubt. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He, He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you Lord we thank you Father thank you for sending your son to make a way for us to come back into your heart to be completely wrapped your love. Father, thank you for being with us today. Jesus, thank you for helping our eyes to see you more clearly today. And Holy Spirit, thank you for enabling us to be you, to be Jesus' hands and feet. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Can you help me thank our worship team? So good. Wow. Wow. So good. Ah, your shiny faces reflect that you've been with Jesus. Well, good morning. I'm Christine. I'm on the pastoral staff here. I want to welcome you again to Grace Center, and I want to welcome our online viewers. Um, If you are new to Grace Center, um, we would love, and you have questions, we would love to answer your questions. Uh, If you will scan this QR code, you'll put in some information and someone will contact you uh, later this week uh, to connect with you. Um, If you've been here at any length of time, you know now is the time that we love to continue worshiping Jesus with our tithes and offerings. Um, There's several ways we do that is either through the PushPay app or through gracecenter.us forward slash give. Or if you have checks or cash, we have boxes at both the doors with envelopes. But if you would now, we're going to stand. We're going to make a declaration over our finances. So good. You ready? 
and we're smiling. Here we go. As we pray for new wells of revival, we pray for new economic wells in our cities to be created. So Lord, we ask you for favor for our city with CEOs, government leaders and kings, manufacturing firms that produce goods for the nations and provide new jobs for our people, technology to establish new markets, energy sources, and efficient solutions to grow as a population, laws and courts that measure with the justice and the freedom of your kingdom, civil servants that encourage entrepreneurs, media known for wisdom and truth, natural resources released, harvested, sold, and reproduced, education, books, and universities that develop godly mind molders who influence the influential, capital to build small businesses that provide services, arts, and culture attracting both young and old, medical community known for integrity and excellence, repentance from poverty, small thinking, and envy, Courage to recognize opportunities and make wealth. Abundance to bless the world and the prudence to save and invest. Revelation to pass on wealth to our children's children. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs that we may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll turn your attention to our screens, we'll run this week's announcements. Hola, Grace Center. Nosotros somos Genesis y Jackie Rivas. Y estamos aquí con algunos de nuestros amigos de habla hispana de Grace Center. Hola. Siéntete libre de acercarte a cualquiera de nosotros. Si necesitas ayuda conectándote o si tienes alguna pregunta durante nuestros servicios de los domingos. Este es un recordatorio que la traducción al español está disponible durante nuestros servicios de las 11 y 15 de la mañana a través de la aplicación Interactive. Si necesitas ayuda descargándola, entra a gracecenter.us barra inclinada traducción o pregunta a una persona y te podremos ayudar. Estamos muy emocionados de crecer como una familia multicultural de creyentes llenos de esperanza que crean un ambiente donde la presencia de Dios puede descansar. Adiós. Adiós. Join us after second service today for our Missions Connect Lunch in the prayer room. We will be hearing from a member of Grace Center whose identity we cannot disclose in order to protect her and the Practical Compassion Organization in a closed nation. The organization she works with provides life-saving care for unborn babies, infants, and children in war zones and in some of the hardest conditions on earth. You do not want to miss what she will be sharing with us. Lunch is available for a suggested donation of $5. All are welcome. Last weekend, we launched Sunday night prayer and worship time and had a beautiful time together. Join us back in the prayer room tonight from 6 to 7.30 p.m. as we continue to fix our eyes on Jesus and agree with his heart in prayer for our homes, our city, our nation, and beyond. Today is the last day to register for our upcoming Grace Revealed weekend happening April 19th and 20th. Join us for our weekend centered around personally experiencing the transforming presence of Jesus. We will spend our time unpacking all that Jesus has provided for us as believers and discover the healing he offers for our internal wounds or mindsets that could be hindering our growth into fully mature sons and daughters. Grace Revealed is open to all those who attend Grace Center and is an especially great next step for those who are interested in serving. Learn more and sign up by visiting gracecenter.us slash events. Families with kids ages infant through 12th grade are invited to join us for our family worship night on Wednesday, May 1st from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in the main auditorium. The heart of this night is to discover more of what it can look like to host the presence of God as a family unit. We will worship together and have stations for creative expression. Doors will open at 6.15 for those who would like to come early to connect. All materials and light snacks will be provided. There's no cost to attend. Just let us know you're coming by registering at gracecenter.us slash events. Hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us this morning. For more information on what's happening at Grace Center, visit gracecenter.us slash events. Have a great week. Woohoo! lots happening. Um, if I can invite Kate Fortunato to come on up. She is our middle school pastor. Woohoo!
morning. Oh, there we go. Oh, good afternoon. Buenas tardes a todos. Um, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to share a little bit about our high school mission trip to Puerto Rico that we did back in March. And to start, um, we'd love to show a brief video from that week. Hopefully, as you can see, we had a wonderful time in Puerto Rico. We were able to take 24 um, amazing people who served so beautifully throughout the week. Yes, we had a lot of fun, but their hearts were so positioned to serve the community of Mar Azul. And Mar Azul is a church that Grace Center has had relationship with now for uh, seven years. And what's really incredible is we've been able to send five teams over those seven years, and this was our third trip as Keep It Real Youth. At this point, Grace Center, a Grace Center team has served on each of their three campuses, and every time we ran into either a campus pastor or somebody involved with Marisol, they just kept saying how blessed they are by Grace Center, how blessed they are by our friendship, and how blessed they have been to just walk out these last seven years together as part of the family. And so a couple of highlights from our trip, we were able to help throw a community night. We went into the surrounding neighborhood where they were and invited people. Um, we were able to, the space that we were painting, so their San Juan campus is their very first campus that they had with the church. And for the last, I don't know how many years now, they've been renting a space. And when Hurricane Maria happened in 2017, the church chose to take the funds that they were saving for their own building and they drove to Costco and bought food and clothing and supplies in order to love and serve the people of Puerto Rico so well. And so for seven years, they've been renting space. And just within this last year, there's a local church um, that has invited them to come be a part of their campus. And so those two churches are now sharing space. And Marazul has a permanent home for the first time in, yes, in the main campus. And as part of that, they have a youth room that is going to be their youth room for the first time. And our teens were able to um, write scripture on the wall. Uh, that is, I'm sure it's been painted over by now. But it was all drywall at that point. We were able to worship in that space. And so it was just such an honor to be able to go and serve and bless Marazul. And we wanted to say thank you to all of you. We got up in February and just let you know that we had a need for financial support um, for our teens and for our leaders. And within 48 hours of us asking, every trip was paid for. And so we are just so thankful. Yes. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for believing in these incredible students. Thank you for seeing them. We are so grateful. 
Kay is amazing. I've done a, I've done a, a youth trip with her. She's my bomb.com. We love you, Kay. Hey, at this time, I would love, we're going to hear about another missions opportunity. I'd love for um, Andrea and Michael Giordano to come up and tell us about that. Um, for those of you watching online, we will need to cut our video feed momentarily uh, in order to protect our partners in the closed nation uh, we're going to talk about. But we will resume our feed uh, just as quickly as possible, so we appreciate your patience. Hey, everybody. Would you all help me welcome Pastor Jeff? Thank you. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Uh, let's do something real quick. This is really important that we connect this way, horizontally. We've been connecting this way, vertically. It's real con can we connect horizontally? Yes. Would you help me by doing that? Would you just stand up? And would you just greet the people around you, say good morning or good afternoon, and we'll get started right away.
Okay, let's take another 30 seconds or so and then we'll get started. Okay. Some of you uh, might not be aware of this if, if you've been watching the news at all. The headlines have been <clears throat> reading lately that an attack on Israel is imminent. And uh, as of yesterday, Iran began uh, a series of missile launches uh, and drones. They're, they're sending drones. And uh, we've got you may or may not know this, we've got a group of folks from Grace Center that are there now. And, uh, and so <clears throat> we want to take a minute to pray for Israel, and we want to pray for our team. And so I've asked Betsy Hedden if she would come up and lead us in a time of prayer. Um, I know we just stood up, but I think it would be important for us to stand back up, if you would. And uh, so <clears throat> don't, don't let her do all of the praying. So maybe we break up into threes and fours and twelves. I'm so grateful for Grace Center that you would stand and pray for Israel right now. And I, I just happened to be texting with Todd this morning and I didn't realize, but they were up all night, he and Rachel and probably the whole team, because of the bombardment of drones in the north where they were, one after another all night long. And the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, was one by one shooting each one of them down to protect their people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just, we just come before you on behalf. <clears throat> of your beloved Israel. We come before you, Lord, on behalf of that land and the people in the land. We stand in the gap, Lord, and we cry mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy over Israel, Lord. They have given you to us, and now we pour back mercy on them. The mercy and grace that we sang about today, Lord, how you have forgiven how you have given us grace and washed us clean. So we stand in the gap for Israel today. And we say the mercy of God is being released from believers in this place into the land. It will intercept drones. It will intercept rockets. It will intercept ungodliness. It will intercept mercy triumphs over judgment. And Lord, I want to pray I just felt in my spirit just to speak this over Israel. I'm going to pray Psalm 24, part of it, for 24, for 2024, for Israel, as I've done for America. Now, and, and I just felt like to, to say and pray that Joshua, before he went into the promised land, he saw Yeshua. He saw him at Jericho as the captain of the host of the Lord's armies because he couldn't have been an angel because he said, take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. He was the Lamb of God, the Son of God. Joshua saw him. So we just say, as we ask today, show them your face, Lord. Show them your face, Lord as their defender. Lord, Psalm 48 says that you are the defender of Israel, not the United States, not even the IDF, Lord. The Lord of glory is the defender of Israel. So I speak to the gates in Israel. Lift up your heads, you gates, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. 
lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, even ministering through believers right now. Many, many turning their hearts to you and receiving salvation, receiving deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> so this morning <clears throat> at <clears throat> first service, um, let me say this. We don't ever try to copy a service to make it just like another service not against that it's just that's not how we're wired um, <clears throat> and this morning I uh, came again with a message and just sensed from the Lord right during first service that he was doing something else and so we we don't do something in order to make something happen and you need to know that doing this to try to make something happen we're doing this to follow the Holy Spirit best we know how um, <clears throat> if I could also because I deal with this as well if we could somehow disarm our that part of our brain that likes to compare compare with what this looks like and what it, what that looks like, and eh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Ooh. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. And so, talks about in Scripture that he, he, he chooses the foolish things, the foolish things. And so, so we're not, we're not saying that we're foolish here, but we are going to move and, and follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, not that we don't do that, but this is just a little different. So, <clears throat> um, you guys want to come up, Richard and Michelle? Um, Richard and Michelle are our young adult pastors, and they had a, a meeting this week that the Lord moved in a unique way, and I just want them to tell us about it, a little bit about it, and because uh, it wasn't just about the movement, it was about what preceded him moving, which was repentance. I, I just, oof, I just sense the, the Holy Spirit leaning in really close during these days, and uh, out of his kindness it's totally out of his kindness but, um, but we would just want to be really sensitive and follow follow what he's doing and so anyway God is here. <laughs> God is here and he is coming. He is here and he is coming. Oh, Jesus. Lord God, we recognize that you are here, Lord Jesus, and you are coming. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for these days of nearness, God. Thank you for your refiner's fire, God, the fire of your love, Lord.
fire of your love, God. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. Keep coming, Lord Jesus. Just to testify of Jesus and to witness and proclaim what he is up to. This is not about a time that happened a few nights ago because he is here right now. I just met with him on the floor right here. God came on Monday night. He came into a home where we were gathered as young adults and we were looking at the scripture about the 10 virgins and being ready. And Richard was sharing about holding on to Jesus with both hands, that the wise virgins were holding on to the Lord in expectancy and readiness with both hands. They had the oil in one hand and the lamp in the other hand and the foolish had the Lord, the lamp in one hand and what was in their other hand could be anything could be cares of this world, worries, riches, pleasures. Oh, Jesus. So he led us through a time of exchange of Holy Spirit, what is in our hands? Will you show us, Lord, if there's any place that we're not holding on to you with both hands and laying that down in repentance and crying out to him for forgiveness. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I feel like the Lord's re refining our desires. I was up here in worship just saying, show me your face, Lord. Show me your face. And it was like the Holy Spirit was coming and refining away all of the desiring, anything that's wide open that's not his face. Thank you, Jesus. You keep coming, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I have sinned and fallen so short of your glory, God. I've desired many things. I've even desired, Lord, what you could do with your hands over what your face can do, Lord Jesus. Over just who you are, Lord Jesus. Would you please forgive me? Forgive us, God. Please forgive us, Lord Jesus. I want to desire who you are, Lord, just to minister to you. To behold you in your beauty. First and foremost, God. Whew, Jesus. Lord Jesus, keep coming, Holy Spirit. We entered into a time of communion on Monday night, and suddenly we found ourselves holding the body and blood of Jesus in both of our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, thank you that you've given us your body and your blood to tangibly hold you, Jesus, with both hands, Lord God. This is not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We cling to you. We need you, Jesus. Thank you that when you were lifted up on the cross, God, that you drew all men to yourself. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we just began thanking him for his forgiveness, for what he's given in his body and his blood. And just facing him, repentance began to flow. And the Holy Spirit was ministering for a long time. And we began to just like try and land. You know the moment where it's like, okay, it's this, Lord, you're, it feels like you're still here, but it feels like a time to land. And so we all said a collective amen after a long time of potentially landing. And after all of us saying amen, we all just sat in silence for about two minutes and nobody moved. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody moved. It was just still, still, still being still and knowing that he is God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We read the scripture about being still and knowing that he is God, that he will be exalted in the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. Thank you, God. And we began to cry out, Maranatha, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And we began to cry out for Israel, for his Jewish bride, because how can we say, come, Lord Jesus? 
Oh, Jesus, the time of the Gentiles, Lord, would you, would you conclude the time of the Gentiles and pursue your Jewish bride, Jesus, that you may come, 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 keep coming, Lord Jesus. Let them see you as their Messiah and behold you in your beauty and how fascinating and captivating you are, Jesus. <sighs> Jesus, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We began to cry out for the fear of the Lord, the repenting for every place where we fear that's not the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Lord, let your fear, the fear of the, the living God mark us, this generation that's alive in the earth today. Oh, you are holy and righteous. Thank you, God. You're the one who's high and lifted up. Thank you, God. She was sitting in silence and one began to worship and just a melody began to rise up to the Lord and a few more joined in. And we all just began to sing and worship and for the rest of the night, into the night, melodies, melodies, melodies and beautiful worship being just glorifying the Lord. We didn't have any instruments. Thank you, Jesus. And as you're just worshiping, quietly at first and then louder and louder it felt like Jesus just came oh Jesus <laughs> just the center the center the center the most beautiful one oh Jesus you are the most beautiful one we behold you Jesus you're alive you're alive you're alive Ooh. the Lord encamps around those who fear him thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Every time I talk about this, he's right here. 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 I was talking about this on Tuesday at the coffee shop getting lunch, and he's right here, and he's spilling over. He's spilling over onto the people working and serving. He's spilling over with his love. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The beauty of him is him. <laughs> the beauty of him is him. <sighs> we sat back and just looked at him. It's like everything else just pales in comparison. Tasted him again in worship this morning. Just spending time looking at him. Everything else ceases to exist. Except him and his beauty. That he is the one high and lifted up, sitting on the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Someone's knee got healed and they were able to lay, kneel down and worship the Lord for the first time in a year. One was praying in tongues and getting reports of visions from the Lord, of his revelation of his blood and of his beauty and how he's drawing near and we must make ourselves ready for him. So Jesus, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would make us ready, Lord, not for an event or not something to happen or not for you to do something, Lord, but thank you that these are the days for you. you're preparing us for yourself, God, that even like Esther on this day, 414, Esther 414 says, could it be that you were made queen for such a time as this, God? Do not remain silent, Lord, the deliverance of your people, Israel. Lord, you're making us ready to enter in to be with the King. <sighs> it's you, God. It's you, God. It's you. Thank you for you, Jesus. Thank you for you, Adonai. Thank you for you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for you, Abba. We cry out, Lord. <sighs> We long for you, Jesus. Oh, forgive us, Lord, all oh, hunger and thirst. Forgive us, Lord, for directing hunger and thirst elsewhere, Lord. You're the only one who satisfies God. It's you, it's you, Jesus. Keep coming, Holy Spirit, keep coming. We worship you, Jesus. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. You're our wellspring, God. You're the living water. You're our true food. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. You're beautiful. You're beautiful, Jesus. We worship you. We look to you, Lord. 
We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you, Jesus. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. More, Lord, more of you, Lord Jesus. We desire you. I long for you, Jesus. We reach for you. We reach for you, Jesus. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come. Come and behold him. Come and behold him. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he captivating? Isn't he fascinating? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's you. It's it's you, Jesus, the person. I've been thinking of this testimony since uh, the end of second service. It just keeps coming up, so I'll just share it. But we have a friend from the Middle East who grew up Muslim, and she met Jesus. (laughs) Her church was actually bombed, and, oh, Jesus, she died. Oh, Jesus, and she (laughs) met the Lord Jesus for real, for real, for real. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. And I was talking with her after and thinking of the glory and beauty of heaven and who God is. And she was, I was just asking her, what was, what was it like? Jesus, Jesus. And she said, it's all there. It's all there. Everything the scripture says, it's all there. But Jesus is heaven. Jesus is heaven. No, Jesus, no heaven. No, Jesus, no heaven. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how can we not worship and adore you, Jesus? You're the only one worthy. You're the only one worthy, Jesus, to open the scroll, Lord God. Have your way, have your way. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So uh, in, the, in the parable of the, the wise and the foolish virgins, as Michelle referenced, there's, there's five wise and five foolish. Um, and the, the, the crazy thing is no one knows when the bridegroom's coming, but you have to be ready. <laughs> and it's, we have to prepare ourselves. We have to be ready. The bride has to make herself ready for the bridegroom. Um, and the, the wise virgins had oil in both their hands. They had the lamp in one hand and the oil reserves in the other hand. Um, and I just felt like there's an invitation. I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak and to minister. Because um, he's the one who, who, who does the ministering. And he this is, you know, it's between each one of us and the Lord. But just if there's anything... I want to give an opportunity if there's anything in your hand, if you have one hand on God and you're holding onto him with one hand and there's something in your other hand that the Lord wants to take out and he wants to give you oil in both hands. He wants you to have the presence of the Lord in both hands. Um, perhaps just ask the Holy Spirit. You can do it quietly with yourself to bring something to mind if there's anything he wants to He wants you to give him that you're holding on to with one hand so that you can put both your hands on the Lord and grab onto him with both hands and that we can make ourselves ready. So, Lord, I just pray for each and every person here, Lord. Would you just come, Holy Spirit, and would you show us if there's anything that we're holding on to with one hand that's bringing death that's causing us to not be ready. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, would you reveal that to us and would you give us the grace to let that go? And would you show us what you want to put into our hands? 
And would you help us to be found ready, Lord? Would you help us to be found with oil in both our hands? Holding on to you with both our hands. We don't know the day or the hour, but we want to be ready. And we know we're living in significant times, God. Would you open our eyes? Thank you, Lord. And if you want to, I'm going to lead us in a little prayer of just letting go and repenting, letting go of the things that are not important or whatever it is that the Lord highlighted and asking him to fill us and pour oil and give us the reserves. So just repeat after me if you want to. Lord Jesus, I give you these things in my hands that are not of you or not from you. I let them go. Would you take them away? Would you remove them as far as the east is from the west? Would you come with your presence Would you come with your healing and your cleansing blood and wash me clean, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you do that, Lord? Would you remove those things? Okay, now you can repeat after me again. (laughs) And Lord, I receive everything that you want to put into my hands. Would you make me ready, Holy Spirit, to meet the Bridegroom King? Would you help me to be dressed in readiness with both hands on you? And would you let me see your glory and see your face? I love you, Lord. Amen. One of the <clears throat> one of the things that <clears throat> I saw that I, I've held on to and can hold on to. It's not a. It's not necessarily a thing but it's disappointment. Can't put both hands on him because I've been so disappointed. It's hard for me to trust again. And I, so Lord, we give you our disappointments the places, Lord, where we believed you, that you were gonna come through and it doesn't look like you did. The people that we prayed for that we believed that you were gonna heal and you didn't. We push all of our disappointments to the middle. We cash in, Lord, all of our disappointments, Lord. We We push them over to you. There's a, and for those of us, Lord, that feel like that you used to be a lot closer than you are now. If that's you, I just want to tell you, the Lord has never left you. He's never left you. You didn't 
you didn't lose him. You're not big enough. And I, I debated on reading this verse. <clears throat> it's in 2 Chronicles 32. It says that, however, when ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place in the land, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him to see what was really in his heart. So it could be that for those of us that feel estranged or like the Lord is far away, it could be that he's actually, as he with, seems like he's withdrawing, is actually allowing what's under the surface to rise. And so if that's, if that's you, then that would be a thing that is in your hands that you want to give it to him. Just want to repent. Oh, Lord. Oof. For some of us, it's, so there's a, a hand on disappointment. You don't realize it. There's also, there's a, there's, for some of us, there's a hand on bitterness. And the thing about bitterness, bitterness is sweet to the taste. You think it's going to be bitter. It turns, it turns bitter, but initially it's sweet to the taste. But bitterness is another, another big one that we, we, we want to let go of. And so, and the thing about it is bitterness defiles many. So it's not just about you and your bitter heart. It's those that are touching you with your bitterness are also being defiled. And so, Lord, we, we give you all of this, all of this. We, Father, it sounds so, this sounds so contrary, but it's true because our hearts have been wounded. Father, we forgive you. I forgive you for not coming through for me, forgive you. I don't wanna hold on to judgment or disappointment or bitterness. I don't wanna hold on to any of that. I want the way to be clean, clear between me and you, Lord. We give you our lives. We give you our lives, Lord. We're expendable. We give you our lives, Lord. You give us your life, we give you our life, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing today. Lord, what you're doing here, Lord, today. I pray, Lord, that for those of us that that need a breakthrough. I just want to bless you with the faithfulness of God. I bless you with the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God to break through into your life. He initiates the faithfulness of God. I just speak that into your house. The faithfulness of God. And Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would give us eyes to see it when it happens. So many things, so many places he's breaking through, we don't see it. Give us eyes to see, Lord, ears to hear. In Jesus' name. So good. <laughs> can we thank Pastor Jeff and can we thank Michelle and Richard? Wow. And our amazing Josh and Fred. Guys, wow. So good. The good morning. Wow. You feel it in the room? Is it just up? Is it just me? Hey, it probably isn't. Um, for those of you that maybe don't know, we actually have a time set aside to pray for Israel on Mondays from 11 to 12 for anybody who has the ability 
uh, to join. We'd love to have you. It's in the prayer room right behind, right behind us. Right behind us. I would love to have you. Also, just uh, to, uh, for anyone, I just felt this on the front uh, row of the prayer team. We have this amazing prayer team. If our prayer team can go ahead and come forward. Um, but if you found yourself maybe this morning going, I want to know Jesus more intimately. I don't quite know how to do that. I want to encourage you, if you haven't thought, maybe pray about coming to Grace Revealed. It, 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 is, it is set up to kind of help meet some of the requirements for serving here, but it's more than that. It really is set up for you to encounter the Lord. You're going to get some information about our value system and our DNA, but it really is set up for you to have your own personal experience um, with the Lord. Today is the deadline. So go to gracecenter.us, read about the um, commitment to attend the weekend because it is Friday and all day Saturday. Um, But please go ahead. If you're thinking about it, go ahead and register because the registration will close tonight. Um, And I'd love for you to be able to come if you want to. Um, We have some words of knowledge, but we would love to pray for any other needs you have. just, we just ask that you come to this aisle so that we can serve you. And it looks like we might need a few more people uh, helping us this morning. Um, but here are the words of knowledge for second service. Um, the Lord is here to bring freedom from fear to trust the Lord. Uh, blessings to receive wisdom and discernment for the days ahead. Healing of skin diseases. Healing of maybe headache, headaches slash sinuses. And um, the Lord wants to heal a nose injury that was due to an accident. Um, So we would love to pray for those words or, again, any other need you have. Um, If if you would like to know Jesus, we would love to introduce you to him. So if you might be here and, and... and you don't know that you know. We want to make sure that you know. You can, anybody on this team would love to speak with you and introduce you to Jesus as well. Just come to this aisle. And with that, um, guys, have a great day. Thank you for being here. And thank you to our online viewers. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a great week.